Your laptop is going to be your most important tool as a mechanical engineering student and even later as a working engineer. But which laptop should you get and in which configuration? And what if you're on a budget? Well, I've got you covered with some laptop recommendations for bigger and smaller budgets. Now, real quick, what makes a laptop good for mechanical engineering? I've made a whole video about all the criteria I'm looking for in a laptop, but here's a quick summary of what we're looking for. Feel free to take a screenshot. And I'm going to start with what I call premium tier laptops. These are the best of the best. A dream laptop for mechanical engineering. And these are for you if you have over $1,000 to spend on a laptop. And depending on how you configure them, you can also easily get above $2,000. The first premium laptop is the Dell XPS 15 with a 15.6 inch display and an Intel i7 processor. And I would go for at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes SSD. If you can afford to go even higher in RAM and SSD, then that's a way to make it even more powerful. But it is a pretty good configuration as is. Next, I'd recommend the Lenovo ThinkPad P series. There are several models in this series, different generations of the P1, P14, P15, P16, so it can be a bit confusing to figure out which one to get, but they're all designed as mobile workstations and pretty powerful laptops, and then they have some differences in possible configurations. For example, the P1 has a center keyboard, while the P16 has an off-center keyboard with a number of had. So depending on what you prefer, you can look into the different models of the P-series. What I would pay attention to is that you get one with a dedicated graphics card, so not one that's integrated into the CPU. And again, go for at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes SSD. And the final premium tier laptop I recommend is the HP ZBook Firefly. It has an Intel i7 processor and I don't think they even sell this one with less than 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes SSD. So you're covered when it comes to that. And all of these three premium tier laptop models have at least a full HD display, which is great when you're staring at your CAD model for hours and hours. But like I said, they're pretty pricey. So now let's look at what I'm gonna call the pro tier, which is slightly more affordable, under a thousand dollars, with some deliberate trade-offs. And in this range, I recommend the HP Victus Gaming 15 with a 15.6 inch display and a full HD screen. It is a game laptop which I usually wouldn't recommend for mechanical engineering because usually you're then overpaying on the graphics card but since this is a cheaper gaming laptop we're good on that and it has 16 gigabytes of RAM and even one terabyte SSD which is not necessary but certainly nice to have it has an Intel i5 processor so not quite as good as the i7 that was in the premium tier models but still good enough for mechanical engineering and like the premium tier models it has a dedicated graphics card which which, I mean, you can expect from a gaming laptop. And that's important, by the way, so that your CAD model looks smooth when you're working on it and doesn't look like this. And finally, we have the budget tier, which is basically as cheap as you can go while still getting a somewhat decent laptop for mechanical engineering. This is gonna be between $350 and $500, depending on your configuration and where you buy it. And in this tier, I recommend the Dell Inspiron 15 with a 15.6 inch display. But here we're really making quite a few trade-offs. It has an integrated graphics card, which is gonna give us less of a smooth experience when you're doing CAD. Think of the for the processor, you can either go with an Intel i7 for a cheaper option, or better would be to go with an Intel i5 or Ryzen 5. The cheaper configuration also doesn't have a full HD screen, only HD, which is not as nice to stare at for hours and hours. And for the budget version, I would pick 8 gigabytes of RAM, which should be enough, but it's nice to go for 16 gigabytes if you can afford it. Or you could also add more RAM later if you realize that you need more power. And another budget decision will be whether to go for 256 or 512 gigabytes SSD. I recommend 512, but you do what you need to do. I'm gonna link all of these models below, but if you want to play around with these different criteria yourself to pick your own laptop model and want to understand why these different criteria are important and where you can make trade-offs to fit your budget, I have made a video where I deep dive into all of the criteria I would use to choose a laptop for mechanical engineering, which you can check out right here.